And uh, so today, uh, I just keep thinking of stuff, but how many were here last Sunday and heard my incredible wife bring the fire from heaven, amen? If you didn't hear that message, that's a very important message in this release series. It's a very important message because that right there holds the key to all the other messages. And so if you weren't able to be here, you didn't hear it, please get online on our, on our website, on our YouTube and, uh, or Facebook and listen to that message. And we're gonna continue today in this series of messages called Release. And we're gathering our faith around this word. And if you remember, the Lord's been speaking that he is releasing us from places of bondage, from mindsets or perspectives of bondage, and he's releasing us into blessing. How many know when God releases you from something, it's because he's going to release you to something? And that's a place that you need to wrap your faith around because God has been doing amazing things amazing things around this idea. So today, on Father's Day, I wanna break it down to another level. We've been saying release and release and release, but today I wanna get to the real heart of this thing. And listen, I wanna make it real simple right off the, right off the bat. The heart of release is healing. It's connected to healing. Did you hear me? Healing. Right, And the only reason God wants things to be released from your life is because bondage leaves wounds in your life that usually get people stuck somewhere. And God doesn't want you to get stuck. And you can't be fruitful if you're not healed. And you can't move into the place where God wants you if you're not healed, if you're over here struggling with things or wounds. And so God's saying, I want my people healed. Come on, shout healed. Come on, I'm talking physically, emotionally, relationally, financially healed. Every area of our life. The problem is it's hard to be healed from something you're still suffering with. Right? You can have a disease or a dis-ease in your life. And and they have to find the source of the problem in order to cure the disease. Why? So you can be healed. They have to find antibiotics. They have to find something that will counteract the thing that's been coming to attack you. So what God is doing in this season, I believe for you, for every person here, is he's revealing and exposing places where you've been hurt so he can heal those areas so you can be released into a new level of blessing. And so what I'm asking you to do today is to not hide the areas in your life that need healing. Don't hide it. Listen, you can be the same for so long that you can just throw up your hands and give up. You can be the same for so long that that you just don't want to get cut on. I don't want anybody to cut me open. Have you ever heard Some people would rather not go to surgery or not go to the doctor and stay sick because they don't want to be cut on, Right? I don't want anybody to see that part of me. Some, some people have anger to the degree that they could be nicknamed the Hulk. You know why? Because they have anger issues that only few people have ever seen the roots of. And there's always areas in our life that we don't want to show everybody. I've got areas in my life that I don't show everybody. And, and, and places that only, only I know and God knows and maybe one or two people. But God is saying on this Father's Day, don't keep putting off stuff and, and, and burying stuff. Let me heal that area. Let me heal the pain. Let me heal the abuse. The abuse. Let me heal it today. And so I'm going to read this opening scripture because it spoke something to me that I believe is going to be the rocket booster for this message. It's in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17. In fact, you don't even have to turn to this first. Let me just read it for you. It says this, For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. I could stop there and we could have revival. I could stop there and we could have a move of God. Amen? I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds because they called you an outcast saying, this is Zion. No one seeks her. Zion was the people of God. So what God is saying is, I'm coming because of all the things you've walked through, the places in your family, in your life, in this world, in your job, all the broken places, you're still my people, and just because you're my people, I'm coming to heal 
all your wounds. Mm. God wants to give you back your health. And I believe this scripture was a prophetic word for somebody today. He's coming to give you back what has been stolen from you. Some of you innocent was stolen from you at a young age because somebody perverted your view of something. Maybe you've been abused or molested, messed up your world and your intimacy. Can I just go there today to some of these hard areas? Because God's saying, I want to give you back your health and your strength and your life, and God's the only one that can do it. Come on, men, this is especially true for us. Fathers, this is especially true. We like to hold on to things, even if they're heavy, because we need to be strong. But God is coming to heal it and restore it, not just to help you carry it. Amen? And that's what release is all about, and I want to hit this on a heart level. And I believe on Father's Day, there's no better time to release things on a heart level. Not just so we can get something from God, but so we can overflow, because overflow is where God wants you to live. Why does God want you to live in overflow? Because he doesn't just want to do enough for you. He wants to do enough for you so you can help somebody else. You can minister to somebody else. You can serve somebody else. So overflow is more about releasing the thing that will heal me than receiving something that will bless me. Did you hear me? If you want to live in the overflow, it's more about releasing those things that keep me in bondage than it is about receiving those things that are blessing. If you can get the first thing down, the second thing's going to come. All right. How many want to be released today? Come on. God says, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to release and restore you. So one of the main definitions of release that we've given in this series is to set free. So we're going to adapt that a little bit more to see God things, see things set free free in our life. Yesterday, we celebrated a, a day that, that uh, was declared a national holiday, I think just the day before, which we call nicknamed Juneteenth, which was the day we call it Emancipation Day. How many know that almost two years before, there was an Emancipation Proclamation of Freedom in this nation over slavery? But it wasn't until June 19th, almost two years later, that the message got all the way to Galveston, Texas, where actual freedom happened. Why am I saying that today? Because I want to use that as an illustration, because sometimes that's how Christians are. You've had freedom that's been given to you, but you don't know it yet. So today I want to come and reveal something to you so you can actually walk in the freedom that Christ paid for 2,000 years ago. Isn't that a great illustration? It's a great time to see that, to set free. So another definition of release is to allow or enable something to flow freely from confinement. And here's my, here's my question, not about where you can find, here's my question, where have you confined God? How many know God is all powerful? He can do anything he wants to, he is sovereign. But God chooses because he is a gentleman and because he gave you a will not to encroach upon areas that you don't invite him into. And so God is saying today, release me. Stop containing me. Stop putting me in a box. Stop making me your Sunday, God. Stop. Stop putting me in this little construct that you've made of who your higher power is and let me be free to be God in your life. That's a word for somebody today. One of the things that, 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 that cell phones, I brought my cell phone up here today, and one of the things that cell phones have today is this, this, thing, this feature called face recognition. It's cool, it even recognizes your face in the dark. How many have a phone that has face recognition on it? All right, you're the cool people. All right, that's good. So what happens is with face recognition, you either have to put your face in front of the phone or you have to enter an access code to get into it. And you can have your phone turned on and the screen will light up, but if you don't have the right access, you can't get into what needs to be done. And and my my daughters, actually both daughters especially, uh, it, it, it will often, it's Father's Day, so I get to talk about my kids. 
They'll often say, well, dad, let me see your phone. And in moments of temporary insanity, when I hand my phone to one of the girls, they will either hold it up to my face to get access or they'll enter a code that they have memorized, right? So that they can get in. They stay close to me with it at first so that they can get the access they need. But when I give access uh, with my face or with the access code, what I do then is then I enable my daughter to run off having full access to everything in my phone, which is not always wise. And fathers with children, you can wave your hand and say yes and amen, because that happens to you too. God's coming to you today to say this. He says, I'm ready to move in you, but you have to give me access. Are you going to open the code to your heart? Will you face identify the things that are in you and show who you really are? Because listen, God doesn't want to counterfeit you. Yeah, I know he knows you better than you know you, and we know that theoretically, but somehow we still try to offer a counterfeit me. God doesn't want counterfeit. He wants your real face. And, and so on Father's Day, your heavenly father today wants you to be free in your life at another level. But he's asking, what level will you release me to have access in your life? How far will you go? How dirty are you willing to let it get? This is the question today. Now, this is where I do want you to turn in your Bibles to John chapter Nine, the Gospel of John, chapter nine. And this is where we're gonna to start today. It's a story about an unusual encounter that Jesus has with a blind man. I want you to say these words with me. Say, like father, like, father. like, son. like son. That's the title of this message today. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your life and your strength and your voice. Let this word, let this story come to us, God, not just as an illustration, but let it speak into the depths of our heart that we would truly be free and walk as the men and women of God you've called us to be. In the name of Jesus, amen. John chapter 9, I'm going to read this story, verse 1 through 7. Now, as Jesus passed by... He saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? How many know a lot of times when we ask questions, we make assumptions in our questions? And I love what Jesus said. He said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Then he says, I must work the works of him, the father who sent me, the son, while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. How many know this speaks to us today? We better keep our focus on the right things today because the night is coming. Mm. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Today, you are the light of the world. Jesus said that to his disciples later. And then when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Today, a question you have to answer is, what is going to happen if the method of release in my life gets dirty? What if things get messy? What if the release God has for you comes in a package you don't like? Hmm. What happens if your intervention from God, his life altering intersection for you doesn't 
fit inside of your perfect little comfortable box of what we want God to do and how we want God to be. The story is remarkable. So verse one, Jesus says, or the Bible says, as Jesus was walking by, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. And this is my first point today. Write this down. If you're taking notes, release is a result of Jesus seeing you, not you seeing Jesus. How many know Jesus sees you before you see him? Mm. So Jesus is walking by and it wasn't even his intention to intersect with this blind man. He had a different destination. He was on his way somewhere and in the midst of it, he was distracted by this blind man and all of a sudden there comes this explosion of the grace and compassion of God. It's the grace and compassion of God that sees you in whatever state you're in. Mm. This man was broken and blind and destitute. And the Bible gives this very vivid picture because what you see here is that the man is not just blind physically, but he's also blind spiritually. He not only couldn't see Jesus coming, but even when Jesus was there, he couldn't necessarily see the answer. He could not see his way out in any direction. In fact, even if he had eyes to see in the natural, there was still an area that he was not seeing. He was double blind, but Jesus saw him. And what you see is this unearned, undeserved favor and kindness of God in action to stop for us. And I came to talk to somebody today who feels like you're in a blind spot. You can't see anybody and you feel like nobody sees you. I don't know who this is today. But I came to let you know today that God sees you. He sees you. He sees your pain. He sees your frustration. He sees your isolation even right here, right now. He sees what you've been going through and you've been shouting, somebody please, somebody please. And God says, you don't have to do all of that. Because before you were ever looking for me, I saw you. This is why we're here today. It doesn't, even, it doesn't even matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what your thoughts are. You don't even have to believe God exists. Even if you can't see him, he still sees you. Come on. The moment was orchestrated from the foundation of the earth. He saw everything you've been through. He saw everything you've done and everything that's been done to you before you were ever created and he created you anyway. Why? Because he has a plan for your life. He does. It's not my plan. It's his plan. Hmm. He saw all the things, all the hurts, all the pain. And he's so good that even when he's on his way somewhere else, he sees you. And, and the problem that we have, especially when we are in times of difficulty or challenge, is that so many of us are convinced that God has forgotten about us. That somehow my blindness has made him blind to me. But I want you to see God's grace here. It, it, it's explained in Romans 5, 8 where the Bible says God demonstrates his love toward us. He doesn't just say he loves you. He demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You didn't have to get it together. Jesus, he laid down his life for you when you were still putting your hand in his face. Saying, I'll do it my way, God. Come on, let me give you a remix. Let me give you the John 9 overlay. While we were still blind, he saw us. I'm telling you today, wherever you are, however you're hurting, whatever blindness you have, whatever prayer you feel like is not getting through today, God sees you. At work, he sees you. In the office, he sees you. Laying down in another person's bed, he sees you. In the crack house, he sees you. 
struggling through college, he sees you. In the midst of abuse, he sees you. In your isolation right now, he sees you. And I feel this in my spirit right now, and this may not be for everybody, but somebody is on the edge of losing hope. God sees you. I feel like somebody's watching this right now on the, on the live stream. God sees you. Come on, somebody just close your eyes and say it in faith. God sees me. Come on, say it again. God sees me. Hmm. You might only have enough money to finish making it through this week, but God sees you. Come on, get the picture of this. Jesus is walking by, and the blind man, because he's blind, doesn't even know that Jesus is walking by him. But Jesus takes an affinity at this man's presence, and in the moment of a question, he says, uh, hey, disciples, let's take a little detour from what we're about to do. And I want you to look at this because this is how some church people do in the same way they turn everything into a theological debate for them. So rabbi, why was this man born blind? Why are they in that position? Why do they always deal with the same issue? Is it God's will or, or I know why they're sinners. They are sinners and they're blind to the truth of who you are. But Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We're special, we're elect, not like this guy. So it has to be his sin, or, or I know maybe it's the sins of his parents. This is a generational curse, isn't it, Jesus? I love how Jesus shuts the whole thing down. I do, I just love how he does. I love how Jesus speaks into a situation completely different than whatever the mainstream is saying. He shuts it down just like God is shutting down all the naysayers in your life right now. Come on, all the people who don't understand why God's coming to visit you, why you're still holding on, all the ones, all the social media uh, haters, all the, all the haters at work, all the, wherever they, listen, God's coming to shut that down because he wants you to only see him. And I love what Jesus says. He says, no. He says, no, it wasn't because of his sins or his parents' sins or any of your theological explanations. He said, this happened, and I know this messes with some of you because we're always trying to figure out why things happen and how did God allow this and why am I going through this? But here is a layer of God's nature right in this moment, a layer of God's sovereignty where Jesus does simply what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Why? So God, his father, will get the glory. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. This happened, Jesus said, so the power of God could be revealed in him. So, so that you, the blind man, and everybody else could see what was happening? So this, I want you to write down this second point. This is the second thing. Your problem is not your punishment. It's a platform for God's power. Your problem is not a punishment. It's a platform for God's power. Come on, you didn't really hear me yet, but you're gonna remember this. It's gonna ring in your ears in Jesus' name. The next time you fall into something and you get so frustrated and angry and, and discouraged, your problem is a platform. Your sickness, your frustration, your marriage, your financial difficulty, it's not a punishment. It's a platform for God to reveal himself in your life. There are many people who feel like their, their problems are punishment from God. They're like beating themselves. Well, I deserve this. And you probably do, but that's not how God sees you. Right? God says, I had to choose a vessel that was fit enough to seek me out, to get down on their knees, to believe for a purpose, even in the midst of pain. That this thing I'm going through right now is not here to take me out. It's here to platform the God that I love and serve. 
It's something God's going to use. So many of us see the problem as a punishment. I guess this is a result of me messing up. I guess this is because I didn't pray enough. I must not have enough faith. They have more faith than me. Those are all lies of the enemy, and they have nothing to do with what God's trying to do. Right? Your current problem, whatever issue it is that you're going through right now, if you will allow God to be released in your life, if you will let him use it, if you'll quit trying to protect it, God will use it. You're trying to keep people from knowing it happened, but God's word says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Talk about, stop trying to hide what God is using. Stop trying to keep secret what he wants to use to reveal his power. More people probably know than you think anyway. Too many people are all sophisticated. We get spiritually bougie, right? You don't want anybody to know you're a real person. You don't want anybody to see your scars. You don't want anybody to know that things aren't all together. You'd rather people think that you're all put together and stay bound than to be free and put your business out there. And God says, you're robbing me of my platform. I wish I had time to just preach that right now. Mm. Come on. The reason I preach from up here is because it's a platform. It's a raised position. A platform puts something in a position to be seen. And God says, when you Uh, will allow me, when you don't allow me to get access to your life, you're robbing me of the opportunity to raise up an ugly situation and perform a miracle. Then when it gets on a platform, God can work. God can work. And and then what, what happens for you isn't just for you. It's for everybody else to see. And God gets glory. And so you got to understand, listen, the, the, it's not the problem that's the problem. It's the fact that you won't let God use the problem, right? You, you won't let him use your dysfunction. You won't let him use your marriage crisis. You won't let him use the hurt and pain. You're going through it anyway. You might as well get something out of it. Let God use it, Right? The devil thinks he wins, but as soon as you allow God to platform your problem, the problem and the devil get destroyed. Your bankruptcy wasn't there to take you out. It was for God to show people the greatest comeback in history. How he could take somebody with nothing and bring him to everything. Come on, God's strength, the Bible says, works perfectly in our weakness. When my problem is at its biggest, God is at his best. When my problem is at its lowest, God is at his highest. Come on. That's important. But if you won't be weak, if you won't admit that I need God, your pride will keep you at a place where you won't allow God to work in your problem. So you rob him of the platform he wants to show off his power through. And and this man sitting right here didn't know why he was blind, probably at this point in his life wasn't trying to figure out why he was blind. He had never seen before. Blind was just his reality. And some of you don't know why you can't see. You don't know why this happened. You don't know why you were dropped. You don't know why you were abused. You don't know why the scholarship didn't go through you. You you don't know why you've been married three times. You don't know. I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help you today. I'm I'm about to give you an answer because you don't know why somebody was allowed to plant those images in your head. You don't know why you you were hurt or, or isolated. Can I tell you why a problem came to you besides the fact that you have an enemy that wants to destroy your life? It came so God's power could be platformed in your situation and your life could change a lot of other people. God can use you in it. He can use you through it. He can deliver you from it. But any way it works, if you let him get the glory, it'll be great in the end. If you would release God, come on, he could release you. If you would just release God, he could release you. Oh, that's why that happened. My problem is his platform. My problem is his platform. Do you hear me? They laid you off the job. God, you just got a brand new platform for your power to be released. 
oh my God, they found out who I really was, who, 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 I, who I was, what I did. God, you just got a new platform. Da, da, da. Right? It's a moment for God to come on the scene and for his power to be released. Until we get that perspective, we will tend to allow the enemy to convince us that the problem is a punishment and that it's probably not recoverable. So we come in here and sing songs like, good, good father. It's Father's Day, right? Sing that song. But we don't believe it in our heart. Oh, come on. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Right? We sing the song, but we don't believe it in our heart. Because the problem has overtaken our view of who God is. To the blind man, born blind. And Jesus is questioned by his disciples. Why was this guy born blind? And here's what God wants you to know. The reason why is not as important as what he's about to do. And the problem that we have in, in study and, and with, with leaders, and if you're a leader listening to this and, and theologians, people who are studying the word of God, the problem that we fall into is we get so caught up in the why and the explanation that we miss what God is wanting to do. And that's what the disciples were trying to find out. Why did this happen? And Jesus was trying to say, watch what I'm about to do. And look what he does. Jesus wanted his power to be released in the man. So when we let God be free so that his power can be released, he can take the most unlikely person and reveal his glory. A nobody. Some of you never heard of. Some of you don't even know the guy's name, but he's in the Bible. Look back at verse 6. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. What? Come on now. God had done a lot of miracles. Why is he choosing this way to release me? I want you to get the picture. All right? Jesus is there, people are talking, Jesus notices the blind man. The blind man's not deaf, he hears Jesus, he hears the commotion, he can't see what's about to happen, but he could hear the conversation so he can start to anticipate. Everybody knows who Jesus is, everybody knows all the people that he'd healed, especially blind people. Especially, right, there, there was a blind man in Matthew 9, 23, and he touched him and he was healed. In, in, over in Mark chapter 10 and verse 52, he spoke the word and a blind man was healed. So imagine he's standing there anticipating, is this really happening? Is Jesus here? Maybe he, if, he, if, he'll, if he'll speak to me or if he'll, he'll, he'll touch me, I'm about to see for the very first time. Oh my God. And look what Jesus does. He takes some dirt. Bring me some dirt. He takes this dirt. Put some of this dirt here. And put some dirt. Put a little more in there. He takes this dirt in his hand. Well, he actually looks at it on the ground. I'm putting it in my hand. And I want you to think for a minute. What did God make man out of? Originally. What is the lowest form that you ever were? Dirt. Right? He takes the lowest part of man. The most insignificant part of man. That's what he does. And then he... <laughs> Sorry, my mouth's a little dry today. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, is that where this, is that where this message took a left turn? I bet that's how the blind man reacted too. And probably how the people around him reacted. Do you know how much spit it takes? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, they're getting, they're giving me help. That's better. Do you know how much spit it takes? He spit in the dirt. But it doesn't say he put dirt in his eyes. It says he put clay. In fact, one translation says it, he, he made mud. Jesus had to put enough spit in the dirt to make mud. Now, I know some of you are really grossed out right now and you're wondering why you came to church. And I hope you never forget this illustration. But what if your release is undignified. What if what God chooses to do is unpleasant? What, what if it's messy? What if God chooses a method? Uh, see, some of you would rather look nice than be healed. Some of you would rather look good in front of everybody than to actually be good because his power made you free. Some of you'd rather save face in front of everybody than be free from your pornography addiction. Come on. Some of you would rather smell good and look good than actually be good and feel good. You hear me? And God's saying, what if the release I'm about to do in your life is undignified? What if it's going to take you actually going back and apologizing? What if it actually is going to require you admitting you were wrong? What, what if you're going to have to feel awkward in walking it out? What if in order to be released, it becomes so nasty that God will have to take the lowest form of you and mix it with the least form of him in order to make a miracle? Hmm. But look at this. The blind man really didn't have anything to lose. He didn't really have anything to lose, right? But he had everything to gain. He had nothing to lose by looking foolish in front of everybody else or seeing what Jesus was doing because he couldn't even see how he looked anyway. Here's number three, point number three. Don't let the method of release keep you from the miracle of release. Hmm. God may need you to get some counseling. I don't need nobody telling me about myself. Don't let the method keep you from the miracle. God may put some of you in leadership relationships or send you to a connect group that you need to be a part of. I don't need accountability like that. They don't know me. God's gonna reconnect some of you to challenging people and challenging places that will grow you. Don't let the method God is trying to use keep you from the miracle that he's trying to release. Some of you are still so bothered. <laughs> You're still saying, here. <laughs> he keeps messing with that. So when it, why is he spitting so much? Yet I'm over here touching what God chose to use. This wasn't Jesus' only option, but he chose intentionally to use this option so that he could be revealed in the moment. And this is the thing that was illuminated to me from the story and actually came to a conversation that I had about it with this guy, come up here, this guy right here. This is Carl. Everybody say hi, Carl. <laughs> like a giant AA meeting. This is Carl. And Carl's gonna be the blind man. <laughs> but
But here's the thing. Why am I preaching a message like this on Father's Day? And this is what's so profound about this message because why did Jesus use this insane method to heal the guy? Why? Because it came from something that Jesus had witnessed before. You remember when I mentioned before that man was created from dirt? Jesus was there. He was there and he saw his father create man from the dirt. And on that day, when he chose to work a miracle, he thought, let me act like dad. Mm. And he took the dirt and spit to reform what a broken world had deformed. And in that moment, Jesus revealed who he was by what he did. Say like father, like son. In that moment, he revealed, we talked about this just, just a few days ago, just talking. That's how he ended up getting elected to be the blind man. And he wished he'd never had that conversation with me. But the thing is, we're talking, listen. Jesus was saying in the moment he picked up the dirt, I'm not just your rabbi. I'm not just a healer. I'm not just a teacher. I'm the one that was there when you were created. And today, as I take this, you're going to see something that was there from the beginning. And I'm going to reveal to you, even though most people there missed it, I'm going to reveal to you today who I am, that I'm God that has come to earth to reform and recreate what sin in this earth has destroyed. It's what it means. So, so, so this is the blind man. Some of y'all don't have the faith for this, so that's why I couldn't use you. But this right here, this right here, right here, this, this mud represents the method that God's going to choose to heal you. Now the blind man's not stupid. He hears the spit. He hears the reactions. And he has to know something unexpected was coming. He could have ran away, but he didn't. My question is this, at what point are you willing to allow God to release something in your life that you need? At what point Are you done and I'm not gonna do that and I'm gonna walk away? When God says, this is how I'm gonna work in my life, you can say, do it, or you can say, it's too much. I don't like it, that offends me. What if God calls you to stay in a place and stay connected to what offends you? Because he's working something in you. Or you can say, God, it's not my will, but your will. Whatever method you use, no matter how you have to do it, even if you have to expose my pain, even if you have to expose something inside me, even if you have to expose something about me, God, whatever it takes, when you get to the place that it's whatever it takes, the miracle will happen every time. Sometimes you just have to decide not to stay all dignified and keep things to yourself and be like, God's just gonna heal me from the inside. Some things, there are, there are things that are holding you that, that still have you in bondage and the only way to get them released is to be messy. And this is what Jesus told this man to do. All right, you're goodbye, man. You can... There we go. That's probably the best. Close your eyes. You're blind. He's like, 
He put it in his eyes. The Bible says he anointed his eyes with it. You're never going to forget this illustration. You're never going to get this word. But look at verse 7. Verse 7, he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is, tra- hold on a second. Blind me. You're moving faster than I'm preaching. Hang tight. God always releases you to send you. God always releases you to send you. God always releases you to send you. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Wait, just a second. I have a word for you today. And, and, and it's specifically applicable for fathers. It's for everybody here. God is asking you in this season to walk with mud in your eyes. Just do it, even though everybody may see you look a little messy right now. Do it even though it seems like, well, I couldn't see before and now you put something else on me. How many have ever felt like that? All right, you just added insult to injury. It got worse, it didn't get better. You have to do it no matter, sometimes God tells you, I want you to walk with it anyway. Hmm. So then you have to take a step and you can go ahead and start taking a step, but you only have to take one step and then another step because you can't see yet and you don't know where you're going all at once and you're taking a step after step. Hold on a second. Why would God tell him to go somewhere and not lead him there? Why would Jesus say go there but he's not leading? You're blind. Jesus, I'm blind in this area. Why won't you take me by the hand? Why won't you walk me there? Because Jesus is saying your freedom and your healing and your release is a process. It's a process. It's a season. Come on. Some of you would rather be cleaned and have a messy miracle. He told the blind man to go and he didn't tell him how to get there. He just said, go, go to the place I'm sending you. And then he said, wash off your eyes. And I'm guessing that's what you're doing. (laughs) And I want you to see this because the blind guy is washing away things that the blind guy didn't put there. He's washing off stuff that was put there by another hand. Not everything that you deal with You created, some stuff happens. And you're walking through the process. Pastor Lynn, what are you saying? Many of the miracles that God is about to do, many of the things that God is speaking to you, especially men in this place and fathers in this place, listen, many of the things he's not going to do without you walking out the process. And some of you say, well, God said he's going to do it and he hasn't done it. It's just because you haven't got to Siloam yet. It's part of the process. It didn't happen like other times when Jesus touched him. It happened after he washed his eyes. The miracle happened as part of the process. You have to go. Jesus puts his DNA on you. He sends you. But the last part of the release depends on you going and not getting offended and walking off because you got dirt on you. Go and obey God. Go say, I'm sorry. Go ask for forgiveness. Go forgive whoever it was that's done you wrong. Go to a connect group. Go to church. You want freedom? Do you want to see? Then go. So many people want to see, but they want to stay. Stay the way you are. Stay right where you are. Stay with the attitude I have. I deserve this. I'm entitled to this. This is what I need. And God is saying, go. Leave that thing. Go to where I'm sending you. Come on, somebody shout go. Go. He's saying to you, when you wash off, when you do what I say, when you participate in the journey of release, you're going to turn around. And when you do, you're going to be able to see. Hmm. Think about that moment. When he can see, 
He doesn't even remember about the spit and the dirt. He doesn't even care. He can see. He just knows something happened that has never happened in his whole life. And some of you are walking through things and you're thinking, I'll never get over this. I'll never be able to walk out of this. Even if God were to heal me right now, I've just been through too much. But you wait till God moves and everything you went through starts making sense. And everything you went through that didn't make sense doesn't matter because you are walking in a new place, because you are a new person, because you are living at a higher level level. Don't stop the work that God's trying to do in your life. Let him work in you so he can work through you. Hmm. I want you to know today that the lowest version of you, dirt, mixed with the least version of Jesus, can release you from any situation. It can reform things, it can restore things, it can change things. Come on, today I'm, I'm talking to fathers, everyone here, my question remains this, and I want you to listen, it's a serious question. Will you allow God to access you, to free you, to bring you back to the place of father to son? Will you, like Jesus the son, say, not my will, but your will be done? Hmm. What if you have to tell your wife something that you've been holding back? What if it doesn't work out like you had hoped it would? What will you do to let God release you? What if you have to go back and apologize to a boss or a parent or a child? What if your release is difficult? What if there are consequences? I know church people like don't, don't like to hear things about that. They like the miracle and the forgiveness and the grace and we love all that, but sometimes there's consequences we have to walk out to get to the freedom that God's bringing us to. What if there's a consequence for the action for you to be released? What if it hurts? What if it's not convenient what God's telling you to do? Will you let God release you? Today, God is coming to release you, but it's only gonna be at the level you allow him access. Come on, close your eyes with me. You can bring me some towels there, Kenny. Thank you. God wants to work in your life. And it's going to be real. And it's going to be hard. And God is moving. He's moving you out of the place where you used to be into a place where he's created you to be. Hmm. There's places that you may have not seen God yet, but God sees you. God wants to work in your life, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on this. Come on, I feel God doing work on people's hearts right now. Do you feel what I feel here? I'm asking you, Father God, to let us trust you even if what you're about to do in our life doesn't make sense, even if it's undignified, even if it's a mess. Lord, help us not to be so concerned with the method that we miss what you're trying to do in our life, God. Expose whatever you need to and bring it to light. Lord, you said you are the light of the world. So bring the light to our situation. Lord, help us not to fight against you. Today, I believe there's healing from fathers to children. You might not even see it yet in the natural, but I believe you're setting God to work in the process. I believe there's healing today for fatherlessness and father wounds. Today, I believe with all of my heart that God the Father is speaking to you. He's a good, good father. Mm, Jesus. Healing is coming to marriages today. Restoration is coming to places where loss has already happened. God is bringing new alignment to people's lives. God is bringing healing to those who've been abused. And some of you have hidden things so deep in your heart and you've just gotten over it by the, by the resource of time, but you don't realize how it still affects you in your health and God wants you to be healthy. 
how it still affects you in your finances and God wants you to be healthy, how it still affects you in your relationship, but God wants you to be healthy. Today, I pray for every father who feels like they're disconnected and alone, who's with family members and they don't know what to do and they feel like things have been too late. Today, I'm speaking life to you in Jesus' name. Don't underestimate what's still in you. Don't underestimate what God can still do. Don't look back. Pull the rearview mirror out of your life and push forward into what God is saying for you to do. Come on, men and women of God. God is speaking to you. He's challenging you. He's stirring you today. I'm sorry I'm taking so long, but I know God is working because this is hitting deep areas of hearts today. I'm gonna ask everyone here in the building with me to stand together. If you're watching online, I'm gonna ask you to just stop what you're doing and focus in for just a moment. I want you to stand with me and I'm not gonna take long because it doesn't take God long. But today, and I'm gonna ask our prayer team to come up because we're gonna minister to you today. If this message is speaking to an area of your life, especially if it's a deep area, and I'm talking first to men or to fathers, but I'm talking to everyone here. If there's a deep area that's been exposed in you and you're like, God, I have got to get this thing taken care of today. Lord, I'm taking it to you and whatever you wanna use, whatever, you need to do to get me free from whatever's back here so I can be released. I'm I'm willing to let you do it, God. That's a big thing to say. But if you will answer that question today, God will respond to you. And if that's you right now, I'm gonna ask you to do something very quickly. I wanna ask you to get out of your seats and I want you to come down to the front of this building because we're gonna pray for you. Nothing special about the front. But there's something when you take a step out and say, I'm coming, I'm just exposing something today in my heart. Listen, we're not gonna embarrass you, we just wanna pray for you, but I want you to come right now. Come right now, if that's you. Come right now, in Jesus' name, if that's you. If that's you today. Come on, there's things that God has brought to you, spoken to you. Come on, there's things that God has brought you through and you know God brought you through but they still weigh on you there's things that haunt you when you sleep at night I don't know who this is for but somebody has haunting dreams at night from things that have happened from things that you fear are going to happen I don't know who that is right now but God's going to deliver you and you're not going to have those night terrors anymore in the name of Jesus. It might be somebody watching online, whoever it is right now, we're gonna pray and I'm gonna just ask our ministry team to come and, 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 and just put hands on you today and stand with you today. Some of you have had serious issues that between you and a father, maybe your father isn't even here, maybe he's not even alive, it doesn't matter. God can break things, he can restore things and heal things, he can cause things to be let go. Today, God is coming to meet with you. Today, father to son, father to daughter, it's him who's the father. Come on, young people. Some young people need to be up here today too. There's some young people that God is speaking to in this area today. In the name of Jesus, my God, in the name of Jesus, let God use you. Let God move through you. Let God do something to you. Come on, it's not over. It is not over, you're in the process. Aaron Kozak, you're in the process. You're in the process. And you feel like you're in a blind spot. But when you see, when you see, it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be good. Don't stop in the process. Come on, I see God moving. I see his hand touching people today. Come on, if you're at your seats right now, would you just stick your hands forward right now? Just put your hands up here and just pray with me for the next 30 seconds. It doesn't take God long to start a process. It doesn't take God long. 
Jesus, let us see what we could not see before. Oh God, let us walk into what we have never known. Jesus, let us understand something we've never understood, God. Lord, we don't want to relive. We don't want to recycle. God, we want to walk out your calling and purposes today. Jesus is here. Come on, men and women. Come on, young people. Jesus is here. Young people, if you're up here, just lift your hand. God the Father is going to embrace you. He's going to pull you up to himself. He's going to do things in your life right now. Come on. He's going to restore things in you. Come on right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, move in this place. Move in this place today, God. Move in this place, Jesus. Move, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. some people over on this side. I want to make sure everybody gets prayed for today. If you're at your seats, just lift your hands high. Holy Spirit, I thank you today for the power of your house, for your church. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you let this sit in our hearts for every man and every father. God, Lord, this is a Father's Day illustration. God, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that we'll never forget this thing. And God, that we're going to walk in such freedom that your blessings are going to overtake us that we're going to see something that we've never seen before. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. We're going to continue ministering and we won't have a formal dismissal. I know many of you have things you're doing with family and those things.